afternoon and welcome to another edition of CB Book Club. CB Book Club is a short video series that runs on CBTV and through which we showcase our talented local writers and their work. Our hope is to arouse interest and to get people to simply read more books and books by local authors to fill your free time, especially during the restrictions from COVID-19. Today, I am very happy to welcome Miss Calpurnia Charles to our show. She has written two short stories for kids, and I'm excited to learn all about them. Thanks for joining us, Miss Calpurnia. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure, and I am glad that you've given me this opportunity to speak with you quickly about the two books that I've written for our youngest readers. Perfect. To get us started, can you tell us first a bit about yourself? Uh, sure. So my name is Calpurnia Nicole Charles. Um, most of my friends and family call me Nicole Young. <laughs> um, so, and yes, my first name is Calpurnia. It's not just my pen name, but I am uh, Belizean by birth born and raised in Belmopan. Um, I now live in Atlant Atlanta, Georgia uh, for the past seven years. Um, I am the enrollment uh, coordinator for the nursing program uh, at the university, the Bernal University in Atlanta, Georgia as well. And I'm also uh, a published poet. So quite a few things happening in that in that small space, so. That is good to know, and I'm, I'm sure I share with everybody else when we say we're very proud of all of your achievements. And so when it comes to writing, did you always have a love for writing? How did that develop? Did it take time, and what contributed to it? I would say that I, always had a love for writing simply because I do not like numbers. I'm not a math person. But I think it all started with those summer days where my mom used to have us read. Um, so for the summer, we had to either take a nap or we would have to read. And I, I many times chose to read and get through those literature books that we had to, to prepare for the, the next semester coming up. So I would say that it all started with those summers of having to read um, or take a nap. And with that, my other option was to write. So what I started doing was to just jot down small um, bits of poetry or little short stories and just to keep those handy. Um, while I, I, I like talking, uh, I, I'm not a big fan of making presentations and being in the forefront. So I found that writing became uh, a thing of joy for me, uh, a, a passion of mine. So in terms of where it came from, I think it started from that, that simple task of having to read and falling in love with the books that I read and traveling in these stories or through these stories. So I will jump right into it when I ask, what inspired you to write books for children? For me, it was, uh, I want to say happenstance. I remember drafting this story um, years ago, the first book I, I did years ago, and, and I kind of just had it with me. Um, I, I remember sharing it with a friend that I would love to write children's books, and the encouragement was always there, but I never really gave much consideration of, uh, to, to the thought or concept of being a, a children's book author or even publishing a book or anything like that. Uh, I, I just kind of wrote it and forgot about it. Um, a couple of years ago, I started writing with a, a group called Coffee House Writers. And again, I thought about it. I shared the idea with my mentor and she, gave me all the links. She gave me all the, the pieces to my puzzle. And, and so that's how it kind of, that's how it kind of started. I took a chance. I submitted my draft to um, 
an illustrator and he was in love with the book. Uh, it, it was something that I thought I would just submit it, forget it, continue on my merry way. This came about in a couple of weeks. Uh, he had a draft for me and, and I, I found it to be fascinating that it was happening. It had happened. Um, so pretty much that's, that's how it, it got started. It was not a, a big dream of mine to say that I will have four or five books written by the time I'm 30 and I will have multiple children's books. And no, I, it, it was something that I thought about. I kind of put it on the back burner. I had a second opportunity and I took full advantage of that opportunity. If you can tell us a little about both of your books, um, they're both short stories. Can you give us basically a short summary of both books? All right, so my first book is called Bedtime, and it is a fun way to prepare your children or settle them for bed. Uh, with that book, what I tried to do, I targeted the much younger readers or much younger children. Um, the words are bold, they're quick, they're easy uh, for them to remember. It is kind of guided by a uh, bedtime routine. So for parents who are trying to teach their younger children keywords or sight words, um, the book would be ideal for them to use. The words would be common words for them to kind of pick up on. And, and the more they hear it, the easier it is for them to associate it with things that they would do on a regular basis. So it is just a fun, easy way to kind of get your children into a routine and then put them to bed. Um, especially if you've had a full busy day, you, you have uh, just a few minutes that you, you can get them to bed before, before they start making a fuss. Uh, it's a fun, easy way to just engage them for a short period of time and then get, the, get them settled. Um, the second book I thought about uh, maybe ages five and a little bit older. Uh, which is something that I learned uh, a little bit differently while I, was, while I was promoting that book. But the gist of that story is about a little girl and her favorite toy. It's a toy that she takes everywhere with her. Um, again, that came about from the very basic concept of most children having uh, a toy that they want to play with their favorite toy. It's that thing that they must have when they're not in the best mood, and that's the, the, the toy that puts them at ease. So the gist of that story is about a little girl and her favorite toy, which happens to be a doll in this case. Um, as I started saying, for me, I learned a very little odd thing here in the US. Children at age five and six um, can't quite read as yet which I found to be quite different than, than our children back Denim home. Belize. So correct. A five-year-old at that point in Belize would be reading that book without, without an issue. So it, it started a, a whole different thing for me where I, I'm trying to look at books that will then engage five, six, seven-year-old children, but also easy for them to kind of pick up on the words so it's easier for them to uh, enjoy the story. They're not struggling to figure out what the words are. Um, the parents can also engage them in the story, kind of get them to think a little bit more critically or creatively as they read through the book, so. Perfect. In terms of Julie B and me, I have noticed that you <laughs> went forward to published that book in different languages. Um, what was the idea behind that? I love that idea very much. <laughs> love it very, very much because it is in native tongues that are very much widespread in Belize. What was that process like? It was easier than I expected actually. So um, for me, when I, when I initially put it together, I thought, Bedtime was my, uh, let's say, it, it was my book that allowed me to grow, to learn, to, to practice, to try different things. And um, 
when I first did Julie B and me, I thought, hmm, people in Belize, they speak Spanish, they speak Garifuna, they speak Creole. It would be nice to have a book for each cultural group. Um, and so I reached out to the, the illustrator and he was totally on board with having it in Spanish. And, and then I chose Garifuna simply because my plan is to write a few more books and then have options. So children in Belize or children across the board can choose if they want to have the book in a different language, which language they would want to try and learn. But I chose Garifuna first because I don't speak Garifuna. And I think it was also an opportunity for me to learn about that, a little bit more about that culture, a little bit more about the language. Um, I teamed up with uh, Miss Gwen Nunes Gonzalez, which was an amazing experience working with her. Um, and she took the time to translate the book. Uh, I was, uh, I had the, the concept that some of the words would be kind of close to Spanish. And again, very easy. She would send me the words, send me, and then she asked if I wanted it um, read as well, if I wanted uh, an audio book. I'm not quite there yet, <laughs> but that's the next step. Um, but for me, I chose languages that was familiar to Belizeans. And then I chose Garifuna first because it's a language that while I'm familiar, I do not speak the language. So it gave me an opportunity to learn as well. I am, I will reiterate that I am very proud that you did that. There is a lot of kids who their first language is the language that they speak at home. And a lot of parents speak to their kids in, in Spanish first and then they learn English in school. Likewise in Garifuna. So I really, really, really liked that idea. Um, okay. So kudos to you there. Um, when it comes to other aspiring writers, authors out there who are struggling to put their thoughts together, who are struggling with the publishing, unsure of how to move, or maybe they're just frustrated at the length of time that it takes to master a book. What words do you have to offer to them? I would say stick with it. Um, it everything, everything takes time, everything happens at the right time, I believe. And for those who are thinking about it, you write, you write as much as you can, you write as often as you can. Um, just put down your, your thoughts, your feelings, keep it as authentic as you possibly can. Um, do not try to copy somebody else's writing, just write, keep it as free as possible and share it as much as possible. That's one of the things that I found. Uh, like I said earlier on, I had written it. I had it sitting there. I wasn't really thinking about uh, how to get it published, but I shared the idea with somebody else and I shared it with somebody else and I shared it with somebody else until finally somebody uh, shared with me a, a way to get it done. Um, so I would say to them, take, every adv take advantage of every opportunity presented to them. If it is a student and a, and a teacher asks you to present something for a class, take advantage of that, that opportunity to share something that you've written. Um, speak to your English teachers about your writing. If it's, uh, you get an opportunity to share it with uh, another Belizean in terms of these poetry contests or story writing contests, enter as many of them as you possibly can to get the exposure. Um, in that way, you get feedback, you learn uh, from other people, just listen and make corrections and, and take advantage of opportunities, no matter how small they are. So are you working on any new books right now, whether it be poetry or books for children? I have stepped away from poetry for a, a short bit. I, I needed to focus a little bit on my dissertation. And so I do have two books pending. Um, one is about a little boy and his family doing a quick beach day. So something for the boys. 
And another one is about this little girl spending her Sunday with her grandmother. So uh, a nod to the grandparents who are stepping in for these moms who are rocking it out. Um, so I have both of those right now. My illustrator is about to send me drafts next week for uh, approval. So let's fingers crossed October, between October and December, we should have two new books coming out from my world. That sounds perfect. How can people purchase a copy of either of your books? Are they available online? Are they available in stores in Belize City? These so far are all available online. I am working on a, a way to get them into our bookstores in Belize so that our locals can also enjoy these books or a little less Belizean readers can have a copy of their bedtime book or and their, their little copy of Julie B. Um, I am hoping with COVID restrictions, uh, paying attention closely to that with the hopes that I can do a quick trip in Belize and, and perhaps do a, a reading or two um, in different parts of the country. Uh, if I can pull in Miss Gwen to do some reading with me, I, I can do one in the South as well um, and, and make sure that the book in Garifuna is promoted in that area for, like you said, there are children who perhaps that's their first language or even on a different note, it may be a, a, a simple thing of, it's not necessarily spoken to them as often. Uh, it, it is also a way to teach them keywords in, in Garifuna. So I'm hoping that all goes well. I get to come home and do readings with my little less Belizean reader, readers and start a little club with them. We look forward to that and hopefully that is sooner than later. I Finally, agree. as is our tradition on the book club, can you please share with us some must reads that you recommend for our readers at home who are watching? Some must reads would be Julie B and me. <laughs> um, but for me, I am not necessarily uh, pegging any one author, any one book, any one um, genre. For me, I will say to the readers at home, whatever piques your interest, read it. Um, if you are better with online books, audio books, take a time, carve out some time in your day and you listen to your book so that your mind develops around the creativity that uh, these books can offer. Um, take time to write. Take time to just be still and to just grow in whatever area that you're most passionate about. And in terms of reading, start looking for uh, a pattern. So if it takes you a longer time to read, carve out some time to read maybe four books for the year or uh, try to see if you're a faster reader, try to see how many books you can read in a month. And, and join book clubs and, and just be open to just about any genre that, that, that's available to you. Miss Calpurnia, I had an amazing time talking with you and I want to thank you so much for your time and hopefully for you being here and aspiring some young readers. I want to ask parents to go out and get your book. Thank you for contributing to the culture and the language of Belize. And I'm so happy to have spoken with you. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for being the first Belizean uh, group to interview me on my books. So that was a pleasure and an honor for me to get an opportunity to share my stories with you. Um, I would like to say thank you to the Belizean community. The support has been amazing. Uh, while they have not gotten an opportunity to buy the books in local stores, they've been welcome and open to sharing the, the links that I've had, the pictures that I've posted. Uh, they've been asking uh, how they can get copies. Um, so as well, thank you to the Belizean community here in the U.S. I've gotten 
tons of support. A bunch of people already ordered their books, um, and I've, I've been in communication with all of them. Thank you to the parents who've taken the time to share the pictures and, and the stories with their, their little ones. And again, thank you for this opportunity. No problem at all. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Viewers, thanks once again for tuning in to another CB Book Club. Remember, we have an open invitation for any Belizean author who wishes to join us. Just send us an email to info at colorblind.bz and someone will reach out to you. Until next time, keep reading. Goodbye.